We now learn how to calculate the angle between two vectors, and we're going to do so for both 2D and 3D vectors. Now, in a minute, we'll work through the two examples that we see here. But first, let's see the formula. Given a vector u and a vector v, we can calculate the acute angle, which I'll go ahead and call theta, between these two vectors using the following. Cosine of theta is equal to the absolute value of the dot product of u and v, so that's u dot v, over the product of the magnitude of u and the magnitude of v. And I'll go ahead and box that formula. Now notice that on the numerator here, we've written the dot product u dot v inside an absolute value. And the reason why we do this is to ensure that we obtain the acute angle between the two vectors. If we don't use an absolute value, then there's a chance that the angle that we obtain be the obtuse angle that I'm highlighting right now. Now, as you can see, this formula is for the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. Using arc cos or inverse cos, we can quickly see that the angle theta is equal to the inverse cosine or arc cosine of the absolute value of the dot product u dot v over the product of the magnitude of u and the magnitude of v. Now, as far as which of these two formula you need to memorize, well, that's completely up to you. I personally prefer to memorize this cosine theta formula here. I simply find it easier to memorize. But if you prefer this one, by all means use it. All right, that being said, let's work through these two examples. The first example we have here, we have to find the angle between the vector a with components 2, 5, and b with components negative 4, 3. Well, first of all, using the formula we've just seen, we can go ahead and state that cosine of the angle theta between a and b is equal to the absolute value of a dot b over the product of the magnitude of a and the magnitude of b. Now that we've written that, we can see that we need to calculate the dot product of a and b, as well as the magnitude of a and the magnitude of b. So let's start with the dot product. We have a dot b, and that's equal to 2 times negative 4, which is negative 8, plus 5 times 3, which is 15. And so negative 8 plus 15 is 7. And that's a dot b. Next, we calculate the magnitude of a, and I'll do that right here. The magnitude of a is equal to the square root of 2 squared plus 5 squared. So I'll just write that. That's 2 squared plus 5 squared, and that's equal to the square root of 4 plus 25. Finally, the magnitude of a is equal to the square root of 29. Done. Next, the magnitude of b. So I'll just write that. We have the magnitude of b here, and that's equal to the square root of negative 4 in parentheses squared plus 3 squared. So that's negative 4 squared plus 3 squared. And that's equal to the square root of 16 plus 9. And that's equal to the square root of 25, which equals to 5. Done. Now, replacing the dot product as well as these two magnitudes by the values we've just found, we can go ahead and state that cosine of theta is equal to the absolute value of 7 over the square root of 29 times 5. And since the absolute value of 7 is just 7, this is equal to 7 over the square root of 29 times 5. Finally, using the inverse cosine or arc cosine, we can state that theta is equal to inverse cosine of 7 over the square root of 29 times 5. And by all means check, but using a calculator and rounding to one decimal place, we find that that equals to 74.9 degrees. And that's the answer. The angle between vector A and B is 74.9 degrees. Let's look at the next example. We need to find the angle between C with components 6, 0, 1, and D with components negative 1, 1, 3. Well, again, using the formula that we have here, we can start by saying that the cosine of the angle theta between C and D is equal to the absolute value of C dot D over the product of the magnitude of C and the magnitude of D. 
Now looking at this formula, we can see that we have to calculate the dot product as well as each of these two magnitudes. So let's go ahead. I'll start with the dot product, so that's C dot D, and that's equal to 6 times negative 1, so that's negative 6, plus 0 times 1, so that's just 0, plus 1 times 3, which is 3. Now adding all of that together, we find that the dot product C dot D is equal to negative 6 plus 0 plus 3, which is negative 3. Done. We now calculate the magnitude of C, so that's the magnitude of C, and that's equal to the square root of 6 squared plus 0 squared plus 1 squared. So I'll just write that, that's 6 squared plus 0 squared plus 1 squared. That's equal to the square root of 36 plus 0 plus 1. And adding all that together, that's equal to the square root of 37. Done. Next, we take care of the magnitude of D. So that's the magnitude of D, and that's equal to the square root of negative 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 3 squared. So that's negative 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 3 squared. That's equal to the square root of 1 plus 1 plus 9. And adding all of that together, that's equal to the square root of 11. Done. Now going back to this formula and replacing the dot product as well as these two magnitudes by the values we've just found, we can state that the cosine of the angle theta is equal to the absolute value of negative 3 over the square root of 37 times the square root of 11. And since the absolute value of negative 3 is 3, this equals to 3 over the square root of 37 times the square root of 11. Finally, we can state that the angle theta is equal to the inverse cosine, or arc cos, of 3 over the square root of 37 times the square root of 11. And by all means check, but using our calculator and rounding to one decimal place, we find that that equals to 81.4 degrees. And that's the answer. And that's how we can calculate the angle between any two vectors in either 2D or 3D. And that's it for this tutorial.